And welcome back on Thursday, November 16th. It's an evening of hope to talk about this amazing uh, evening. Uh, Dr. Paul Wheatley-Price, medical oncologist with the Ottawa Hospital and University of Ottawa and the president of Lung Cancer Canada. How are you, doctor? Very well, thank you. It thank seems you like you me. have um, uh, quite a few titles there. Pretty important guy. <laughs> Can you tell us about uh, Lung Cancer Canada? I can. So Lung Cancer Canada, which this, uh, this little pin is the logo for, that's, yes. uh, it's our only national charity for lung cancer. And we compare that with a number of other illnesses that have lots of organizations. But lung cancer, despite being the number one cancer in Canada, mm -hmm. number one killer in Canada, number one killer in Canada, yeah. cancer is the, this is the only organization because of stigma and really the judgment that it's incredible. Lung cancer patients face. Yeah. Now I know I emceed you this evening two years ago, and yeah. I still have that very pin right. on, on one of the jackets that mm -hmm. I wear, my, my fall spring jacket, and it's a very important cause, obviously. So can you give us some of the statistics then? Because right. I have them in front of me, and they're pretty staggering. They really are. Uh, so 28,000 Canadians will be diagnosed with lung cancer this year. That is the number one cancer. Uh, more than 20,000 Canadians die of lung cancer each year. And if we think about the four common cancers, lung cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, and prostate cancer, well, lung cancer kills more than those three combined. Mm. Um, among women, uh, lung cancer kills more women than all of the specifically female cancers combined, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, etc. So it really is uh, uh, by far the most, uh, the leading cause of cancer deaths in Canada and indeed worldwide, and okay. yet despite that, underfunded, under-resourced, under-represented. Uh, uh, yeah, because I'm also reading that uh, you receive s less than 7% of, of research funding. Right, so I also treat breast cancer, so I'm not uh, here to bash breast cancer fundraising, but the just to, for comparison's sake, uh, breast cancer, if you look at everybody who dies of cancer in Canada, about 7% of that is from breast cancer and yet about a quarter of the research dollars go to breast cancer. It's exactly the opposite for lung cancer. More than a quarter of cancer deaths are from lung cancer, get about 7% mm. of the funding. So, so why would that be then? You know, if I knew the exact answer to that, we'd yeah. be a lot further ahead. But I think one of the main issues is stigma. Mm -hmm. uh, lung cancer patients are judged, we feel. And in fact, we ask patients and caregivers through Lung Cancer Canada, and they report the, the stigma, the feeling that they have to justify their illness. You know, I became a Canadian a couple of years ago, and so I'm uh, preparing for my citizenship test. And I understand fully that in Canada, we don't judge people on your gender, your sexuality or faith um, but in the cancer world we kind of do judge mm -hmm. you on what kind of cancer you've got so that's a big uh, that's a big so, problem. So what is it then because a lot of the myth is out there that lung cancer is purely brought on by smoking perhaps? Right and I think the word you use there purely is the is the is the myth yeah so yes lung cancer is associated with smoking um, uh, just as uh, heart disease is associated with obesity and uh, other associations that we can make. But the reality is that if you have lungs, you can get lung cancer. Mm -hmm. And so there's a proportion of people who never smoked, and then there's many, many people who are diagnosed with lung cancer who worked ter terrifically hard to quit over many years. And then there's people who still smoke. Um, so it's really ac across the range. And you know, we as an organization would say, you, really, that doesn't matter. If you yeah. get lung cancer, you are deserving of the best access to treatment possible. Of course. So we have about a minute and a half left. I want to get to the details of this amazing uh, night as well. Right. Tell us about uh, all the fun that's going to happen on uh, November 16th. So the Evening of Hope, uh, it's going to be at the Horticulture Building at Lansdowne, uh, 6 p.m. till about 9 p.m. Uh, an evening of hope.ca, that's the website to go to. Um, there are some early bird ticket pricing ends tomorrow. Okay. Um, so it's the funds uh, raised will go towards Lung Cancer Canada. We've been able to very real way bring those back to projects we're now doing in Ottawa rather than just going to the national program. Uh, at the event there's uh, uh, food, drinks, uh, music, entertainment, uh, raffles, um, people on stilts, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, sorts of, uh, all sorts of fun things make for a really enjoyable evening. It is a lot of fun and this yeah. is sort of, it's the fifth annual event as well. The fifth event, yeah, it's terrific. Uh, we don't really see these events for lung cancer very much but um, through a uh, few very dedicated people led by Louise Bowles, uh, 
this event has become really uh, a, a, a calendar event for at least for us in the community. Definitely, okay. Yeah. Uh, so the best place to go to uh, for details on, on uh, e everything you're talking about here, I mean, an eveningofhope.ca. An eveningofhope.ca is the, is the website. If you just Google Evening of Hope Ottawa, then it should come up. Simple as that. Yeah. All right, in Evening and hope of Hope, it's happening Thursday, November 16th, Horticulture Building, which is always such a beautiful location. Sure is. Thank you very much, Dr. Paul Wheatley-Price, for being here today. And as always, thank you for being here at uh, Rogers TV.